All right, skipper, all aboard and ready to cast off. Nah, you don't really need to try to sound like Johnny Depp in Pirates of the Caribbean to handle a cruiser, but there are a few nautical terms we really should learn. So the best person to ask is definitely our instructor, Robin. Hi, Robin. Hi, Paul. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you too. Now, you're a really experienced old sea dog, aren't you? Well, I've done a bit, yeah. I've been 30 years at sea and seven years on the broads. So you should know pretty much everything. Tell us some of these difficult nautical terms. You don't need too many difficult nautical terms, but it is handy to know that that's the bow, that's the stern, that's the starboard side, and that's the port side. Well, that's not too difficult, is it? OK, so we're all ready to cast off, so let's get underway. Before we do, we need to know whose job is whose and what we should be doing. So over to you, Robin. Right, Paul, I'll just instruct Linda and the children on the best way to let go. So we're going to go off and start letting go, OK? OK. Remember, you need one hand for the ship and one hand for yourself when you're stepping ashore. Right, you need to gently let that rope go. Just coil it in your hand, Luke, and place it on board the boat. Linda, if you can now get ready to slip the line, I'll push the boat off and we'll get underway. OK, Paul, slow ahead on the throttle. You're tending to oversteer a bit and putting your stern into the key. Just go very gently. Of course, Paul, remember that uh, a boat is not like a car. They steer from the back. The stern will swing out or swing in according to the way you turn the helm. So get the feel of her before you do any sudden manoeuvres. Pull her back okay. to port just a little bit. Yeah. Right, we see. Put your helm amidships if you can. Put your helm in the middle. Yeah. So she's okay. going straight. All right, we're going pretty straight now. I seem to be going at a reasonable speed. We've cast off. What about a read on this, um, this swing bridge? That looks tricky. The swing bridges can be tricky, but it should be no concern to you too much because a cruiser will pass underneath at most states of tide. Right. But if in extreme states of tide, it will swing. If the red flag is up, it, will, it is operational, so it will swing on demand. And then you just wait? And then you would wait in the channel until it has swung and then pass through. Well, if I, the engine suddenly started losing power? If the engine starts to lose power, it's probably a good idea to take it out of gear, give it a quick burst or two astern in case it's a rope round the propeller. Oh, something tangled up yeah. in the but propeller. If it's anything more serious, more up as soon as possible and phone your boat yard. You really need to drive on the right-hand side on the river, yeah. so you pass port to port with anything coming the other way. And what about, I mean, there are dredgers and other boats and so on on the water. What, what about if I encounter one of those? If you encounter one, have a look. Try and read the signs before you get to them. Always ease your speed. If you can always go faster, Is that but the you first can't thing always you go do? slower. The first thing you should do is ease your speed. Yeah, OK. So you can read the signs, Take directions for whichever way the arrows say you should go and proceed slowly past. And I'm always on the right. Always on the, the starboard right. side. Yeah. I'm learning the technical terms. That's correct. Yeah, of course, on your holiday on the broad, you will come across sailing vessels. If you come across a yacht sailing, especially if the wind is directly down the river, they may have to tack backwards and forwards in front of you. The thing to remember is, if you head for their stern, you might have to ease your speed a little bit before you approach them, and then increase a bit to pass under the stern of the boat where you're directed to go. You'll often find that a yachtsman will point in the direction he wants you to go, and you are advised to go that way. If you visit Alton Broad, you may come across powerboat racing. In the season, they race Thursday nights, some Sundays and bank holidays. If you arrive at Alton Broad during the racing, you will be directed by the officials 
for the correct way to cross the broad to your mooring. Of course, Paul, you might come across water skiers during your holiday on the broads. Keep an eye out for the yellow and black signs that show you're entering or leaving the water ski zone. And just be aware and keep to the edge of the river. If you see a yellow flag, that means that there are water skiers in the water, so do take extra care. I've seen quite a few speed signs here um, and the man I understand who knows all about it is the head navigation ranger, Adrian Vernon. 